What's up, everybody? My name is Jacob Collier. This is Jethro the Crocodile. And we are here today to introduce to you the Jacob Collier Audience Choir. Without further ado, Brian, over to you. Thanks, Jacob. Brian here from Native Instruments. Today, we have a very exciting new and free instrument for you, created in partnership with Jacob Collier. Introducing Jacob Collier Audience Choir. Jacob Collier is a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, producer, and educator who is celebrated for his extraordinary musical talent, seamlessly blending genres like jazz and pop. Renowned for his innovative arrangements, Collier often engages his audience in collaborative choir experiences, showcasing a dynamic and inclusive approach to music creation. Audience Choir captures these moments from his world tour and lets you be the conductor of your own audience, letting you play layer samples from the audience from multiple locations on tour. This exclusive instrument is free, so grab it now at nativeinstruments.com so you can try it out and follow along. To get your copy of Audience Choir, you'll go to nativeinstruments.com and request the license for your native ID and use native access to download and install the instrument. Audience Choir is a contact instrument, so make sure you have the latest version of Contact 7 Player or the full version installed first. For step-by-step -step instructions getting Audience Choir up and running, you can check out the blog article, which is linked below. You can always open Contact by itself and play Audience Choir, but if you want to record something, you'll also need a DAW. There are many DAWs out there, but if you're just getting into producing, there are a handful of free DAWs available like GarageBand, and others usually offer free trials for a limited time like Ableton Live. Now for the fun part. Let's learn how to use Jacob Collier's Audience Choir. We'll briefly go over the layout of Audience Choir before we dive into the inner workings. The list of cities on the right are where samples were recorded from. Different notes will use different samples from the various cities, which are shown when playing. Additionally, different parts of the audience will also illuminate. The box on the left morphs between different vowel sounds using the circle here. In the top left, you have a chord generator where playing a single note plays a four note chord based on the selected root note and scale. The sliders and knobs below let you further refine the sound from timbre, attack and release, or adding some effects. Lastly, the icon here brings up additional instrument settings like instrument tuning, pitch bend settings, and aftertouch. Let's start creating some music. We'll first start with playing individual notes. Using a complete control keyboard or viewing the virtual keyboard in contact, the keys are broken up into three different colors, yellow, orange, and blue, which represent different things that you can play. When playing any of the notes in the blue range, samples from the different cities will be used and illuminate the audience. The orange keys, these are pre-recorded triads that were recorded during the shows. These chords are not affected by things like the XY pad or dynamics. What you can control is using the triad blend control, changing between a major or a minor triad. The yellow keys are different effect sounds like stomps, snaps, claps, and words. Combine them together to create a rhythmic pattern with stomps and claps while playing a melody or a chord progression. You don't need to play like Jacob in order to sound like him using the chord generator. When chord generator is enabled here, playing individual notes using the blue keys will play a four voice chord. Below, you can change which scale the chords are in from major, minor, or harmonic minor. Uh... 
Add more expressiveness using the mod wheel, which controls dynamics, increasing or decreasing the volume of the audience. On the topic of adding expressiveness to audience choir, let's talk about vowel morphing. The XY pad is a great way to change the tone of the audience. Each corner is a different vowel sound, and using the circle in the center blends between them or using the control keyboard. A fun way to add creativity is using the play button. The dropdown selects preset vowel morphing. For example, with the current setting, the circle moves between m, a, m, and then o, or select something like bounce. If none of these presets are what you're looking for, you can just record your own. Press record and then move the circle. You can loop the movement forwards, backwards, or forwards and then backwards again, or adjust the playback speed. The six knobs below let you further refine the sound. First we can adjust the timbre, or the tone, of the audience. Clicking the three lines, you can select different types of sound adjustments such as a low pass, high pass, or formant filter. To the right, we have knobs to add delay and reverb. Turning them to the right increases the amount of delay or reverb being applied. Just like timbre, you can also select different types of delays and reverbs. Next is the stereo knob, which either increases or decreases the stereo width, making it sound like the audience is either right in front of you or all around you. Lastly, there are the attack and release knobs. These change how the sound comes in and how it goes out. Increasing the attack, the choir will more gradually fade in. Adjusting the release, either the sound stops right away or gradually fades away.
Now that we have a solid understanding of the main components of Audience Choir, let's talk about the settings and additional things that you can change. Click this icon here to access the settings of Audience Choir. As I mentioned earlier when playing, different parts of the audience are illuminated or the animations around Jacob. You have the option to turn these animations off if you'd like. These just turn off the animations and don't affect the sound in any way. One of my favorite features of this instrument is the integration with Aftertouch. With Aftertouch enabled and using a keyboard that has Aftertouch, you can apply additional pressure to the keys and it's gonna be affecting the sound based on the settings that you have here. For example, I can set Aftertouch to control vowels, select what vowel I want it to start with and what I want it to blend into. Now when I apply pressure, we can hear it change. In mono mode, if I play a chord, applying pressure to any of the keys, every note will change together. In poly, if I apply pressure to the top note in a chord, only the top note will be affected, giving your playing more expressiveness. One thing to note about poly is that you'll need to have a keyboard that supports polyphonic aftertouch, such as the Control S series. To the left of aftertouch, you can change how many steps up or down you can go when using the pitch wheel. You can have a slight pitch bend up and a full octave pitch down. Vowel Morph Pad is where you would set up a MIDI controller to control vowel morphing. Either press this icon and move a knob or a fader on your controller and it will MIDI map to it. Or if you know which CC value you need, just turn the knob to that number. Now you can control the vowel morph section using your external MIDI controller. Lastly, the tuning preferences. With tuning enabled, you can tune each note individually. Since these are recordings of an actual audience, you may need to slightly adjust certain notes if it sounds out of key with your project. From around the world, there are slight variations in how instruments are tuned. The drop-down lets you select different tuning options, or you can select and create your own tuning. Either tune the 12 notes in the scale, or you can tune each individual note. It's a little bit more time consuming, but it gives you the greatest amount of control over the tuning. As we've learned, this isn't just your ordinary choir instrument, but a fun and creative way to be the conductor of your own audience. Use Chord Generator to create cool chord progressions, morph between vowel sounds, use Aftertouch to add expression, creative effects, and much more. We hope that you found this walkthrough helpful and it got you inspired to check out the instrument yourself. And who knows, the more that you use it, you might find a few hidden surprises inside. Go to nativeinstruments.com to grab your copy of Audience Choir and also make sure to check out Jacob Collier's latest release, Jesse Volume 4, using the link below. Thanks for watching.